Welcome back to the second part of the hieroglyphic alphabet. Uh, today we'll be learning five more letters, so I'll start right now. Get ready. So last time we covered all of the long vowels, so now we're going to start on the consonants, and the first consonant we have is the letter B. It looks like a foot. Uh, it's a rather poor picture. Here's a slightly better one. Um, what you really need to remember is a foot symbol means the letter B, just B. Now sometimes it uh, may be easy to tell what the letter is when you see it uh, painted nicely in a picture, but when it's etched into sandstone, a lot of times it's uh, much harder to tell what it is. Uh, so in this picture here, if you go to the second uh, row all the way over to the far left, you'll see a foot uh, or, the, or a leg, it's the letter B that you just learned, and you'll notice it's uh, facing the other way from the two pictures, pictures I just showed you. Again, that's because Egyptian can be written from right to left or left to right, so you've got to always be on the lookout for that. Our next letter is the letter P. It's usually depicted as a square or a rectangle that is close to being a square. It uh, represents a stool, so I'm told. Uh, what you need to remember is it's a square looking thing. It's a P. makes the P sound. Now, if you look here, this is a cartouche of a pharaoh from the Ptolemaic dynasty. Uh, the Ptolemies, in case you don't know, were a series of pharaohs that ruled Egypt after the time of Alexander the Great. Uh, if you look into the upper left-hand corner of the cartouche, you'll see essentially just a, a square etched into the stone uh, right above a semicircle. So that square is again the letter P, uh, so it's not, not as easy to tell sometimes when you see it just in the stone. And uh, now look here at this cartouche, uh, specifically the cartouche on the left. And again, if you go up to the upper right-hand corner of the cartouche on the left, you will again see a, a square edged into there. And that again is the letter P. So the next letter is the letter F. It looks so, sort of like a snake or sometimes a slug or some sort of worm. Uh, it's supposed to be a horned viper. And it's, again, the letter F, so it just makes a F sound, very similar to English. You all know this. And now, I'll show you here again the letter F in an actual hieroglyph. Uh, this is the word Nefer. It means uh, good, or beautiful, or perfect. And you can see there the, the horned viper is there as the F in uh, Nefer. We'll come back to this word at the end of this video. It's a very important one to know. Our fourth letter is the letter M. Uh, this is depicted as an owl. Sometimes it's hard to discern the letter M from the other birds that are used in hieroglyphs. We learned uh, two other birds in the last video. Uh, but one trick is it's usually uh, depicted with the beak that you see right here in this picture. And that, that helps uh, you to pick it out. Um, so again, this is the letter M. It just makes a m mm, m sound. Uh, again, just like English, you all know this. So of course, let's take a look at it in the actual hieroglyphs. It's on the left here in this uh, hieroglyph, and in the top right-hand corner now in this one. Uh, as you see in both of them, it has a beak, and it's, it's turned to face towards you. Uh, pause your video if you need to look longer. Now, if you remember from when we learned the long vowels in the last video, uh, some of the letters can be written in more than one way, and M is one of those, so it's not always written as an owl. Um, sometimes it's written as this other shape, which, um, I'm sorry, there are no good pictures of it I could find, so I'll have to show you some of the glyphs. Uh, some people say it's supposed to look like a finger, though personally I think it looks more like a stapler. Uh, if you look in, again, this cartouche I showed earlier, the, the alternate M is the thing that looks like a stapler in the one on the left between the lion and the double reed leaf, so it's kind of in the lower half. Or in this one, you can see it again. It's in the... Uh, over towards the right side of the cartouche under, underneath the lion uh, to the right of the double reed leaf. Um, so... Be, uh, be aware that it's not as commonly used as the owl, uh, but it's still still sometimes used. Now our final letter for today is the letter N. 
This one is uh, one of the easiest ones to remember because it's just essentially a squiggly line and it looks kind of like an N for the first couple squiggles. Um, and it's N. You know, you all know this is the letter N. And it's, it's one that's easy to pick out, as you can see here in uh, this hieroglyph or in this one. I don't really need to point it out to you. You can, you can pretty much tell where it is on your own. But, like the letter M, the letter N can be written in more than one way, and it's sometimes depicted as the red crown of Lower Egypt. Uh, here it is in one of the glyphs. It's uh, pretty easy for you to see and pick out. It's pretty distinct, so you shouldn't have, shouldn't have too much trouble picking that out. Now, if you haven't noticed already, Ancient Egyptian is a pretty confusing language to read. Uh, something I want to make you aware of is if you see three N waves um, on top of each other, uh, like in this picture, that's not N, 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 or N, N, N. Uh, that's the Ancient Egyptian word Mu, which means water. If you see the kind of like waves, so that was how they would depict Mu, their word for water. Uh, now, earlier in the video, I uh, introduced you to the word nefer and said we'd get back to it. Well, here we are. Uh, this will be the last thing we do for this video. And uh, if you look at it, you can see there's a horned viper to make the F sound. But there's not a wave or a squiggly, squiggly line or red crown to make the N sound. Uh, so you may be confused about this. Well, if you look towards the right-hand side, there's a long object that looks like a spoon or maybe a banjo. I'm not quite sure what it is, but that in itself is the symbol for Nefer. Uh, that symbol just by itself can mean Nefer, N-F-R. Uh, but something the ancient Egyptians liked to do, which is um, kind of confusing to us, is they would write a symbol that could mean the whole word, but then they would write the um, maybe the next few letters in the word. Um, so even though the symbol by itself can mean N-F-R, they still decided to write F and R after it. F, the horn viper, and R, the sort of oval shape you see at the bottom, which we'll learn next time. So, again, this is the word nefer. It can mean uh, pretty, or beautiful, or good, or perfect, and you'll see it a lot, and it should be easy to pick out, because it's usually, not always, but usually written like this, with the spoon or guitar shape, followed with the F and the R. But if it's just by itself, and now, once you're starting to learn these uh, hieroglyphs, you can actually understand the language of the ancient Egyptians more. Like I told you, uh, nefer means uh, beautiful or, or perfect. And if you look, some of the most famous uh, queens of ancient Egypt had this in their name. For example, uh, nefer, Nefertiti, the wife of the heretical monotheistic pharaoh Akhenaten. Uh, nefer, Titi, her name. Or there's Nefertari, or Nefertiri, uh, the wife of Ramesses the Great, you know, one of the most famous pharaohs of ancient Egypt, so Nefertiri, or Nefertari, depending on how you say it, they both have the word Nefer, meaning uh, beautiful or good or perfect in their name.